Hi, this is Kristen Naomi with Intellectual News. I am sitting here with two wonderful people, uh, people that are involved with documentaries on the Prado that's happening tonight from the uh, Film Consortium. I'm here with Caroline Amagay and Antoine... De Cazat. De Cazat. <laughs> I love that name. Um, Caroline, you're going to be hosting tonight, correct? Yeah, I'm fortunate to be the host of uh, Documentaries on the Prado at Mopa Museum. Yeah. So I'm excited to showcase the four documentaries that we have on screen tonight and to meet everyone. So, very yeah. nice. So everyone's, everyone's invited. There's four yeah. documentaries, you said, right? Yes, yes. They are San Diego Film Award winners, and uh, they'll be screened there. We'll have a Q&A section as well in the end of um, the screening, and uh, everyone is welcome to come. Great. Attend. Yeah, I know there's some tickets still available, so people yeah. should run out and get those as soon as possible. These documentaries are... They're so mind-blowing. They're from San Diego. These documentary filmmakers are just beyond what I thought we could have in San Diego. And talk about having beyond wonderful filmmakers in San Diego. We have a documentary filmmaker with us. Antoine, tell us a little bit about what you do in your field. All right, so I'm a producer, and I was in charge a few years ago of um, the filming of Oceans. And my we filmed in, in the entire world, but I was in charge of the Pacific the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic side of the United States. And that's from the Arctic to the Antarctic. Wow. So I covered a lot of grounds, but we, we filmed during four years, prep for three years. And um, I had a chance to film a lot here in San Diego using people, crews from San Diego, um, but also uh, had the chance to um, spent a lot of time in the water, um, just like 10, 20 nautical miles off the shore here, and just trying to film a blue whale. Just one blue yeah, whale. So th that is the, well, that, the, the focus. For, for, for three years, mm -hmm. for three years, we came, because they they come in in season. Your audience probably knows that. It's the month of July right now. Um, Ooh, whale season. Yeah. And, uh, you, I mean, if you don't have permits, you can't come close to them. But because they're in the endangered species, mm -hmm. and um, but um, so we were working with a marine biologist, and every day we'd go out with a cruise, and dump a cameraman in the water, waiting for a blue whale to come out. So it it took thirty three weeks over three three years, just because you fail and fail and fail and fail. Sometimes it's visibility, sometimes is the animal is scared and goes away. Sometimes um, you, you don't see them, you know, and then we, we found a trick mm -hmm. to film them. Yeah, tell us what your trick is to find whales. <laughs> well, the, the blue whale is an animal that um, you have to study, right? Mm -hmm. Before you go on a nature movie, you have to study your animal. And the best is to work with uh, biologists. And so um, we understood that the, these whales would come out of the water for food because they eat constantly mm -hmm. as opposed to the, uh, to uh, other whales and their pr preferred food is krill so we'd find a um, krill ball a krill ball yeah what we, is a krill ball a krill ball is is like a big ball sometimes you see pictures of uh, sardines or anchovies okay, yeah. all together mm -hmm. so that would be a ball right okay got we, it we call it like a bait ball if you want Okay. For, for predator fish. And so krill balls are very small fish, uh, shrimps. Yeah, they're microscopic. They're microscopic. Yeah. And that's what the big blue whale, as big as an airplane, eats. And so we decide to drop our cameraman in the krill ball and wait. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And, and that's how we succeeded um, uh, to film from um, head to tail. The entire animal because um, if you if you if you film only part of the animal you don't understand the size mm -hmm. um, and and you know this enormous 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 fish that roams around here and, and you guys you should go in in the ocean and see these animals it's, it's you're very lucky they're they, they're very rare and um, I mean it's it's a real safari out there if if, if you know anybody who has a boat uh, and again um, approaches the animals with respect of uh, the Marine Mammal Act, mm -hmm. um, you should go and see it because it's, it's one of the wonders of nature.
That's wonderful. I I'm so excited and surprised to know that you don't have to just go to the whale. You literally have to make the whale come to you as well. Absolutely. No, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, it's actually uh, totally forbidden to to chase an animal. Mm -hmm. You have to wait. And if the if the whale comes to you, um, and sometimes they do because they're just curious. Yeah. And that's 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 true with dolphins. Mm -hmm. People have seen that or or um, seals or yeah. and all these animals are protected. Well, I'm just curious. Are you showing oceans tonight at documentaries on the Prado? Are we? No, we are no. not. No. But you can have it. It's distributed by Disney and you can oh. find it on Amazon. Oh, so great. I highly recommend it. Definitely going to check that out. But now let's tell us more about what documentary you're going to be showing tonight. We have an amazing selection. We have three shorts and we have one uh, feature, feature length. Um, the filmmakers will be attended, so attending and um, can't wait to share that. And uh, it's very interesting. It's every genre in, that, in those type of documentaries and uh, be quite a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So you're going to be there tonight? Yeah, apparently. Um, I'm, yes. We're doing a Q&A. Yes, we are doing a Q&A. Uh, we are excited to introduce... Uh, Antoine and everyone is really looking forward to meeting you. So um. and I think the idea, because um, maybe I'm a little uh, more experienced than the, the our, new, our new filmmakers, I can maybe um, give them some guidance uh, on how to uh, go about making a, um, a documentary. Absolutely, I know. I know um, being a host as well and moderating these panels is so interesting to find out you know everyone's their favorite part about documentaries they're the hardest part their struggles what they can learn who they learned from was there anybody that you kind of looked up to or anybody that kind of guided you along into documentary filmmaking um and i know i think it, this is something i picked up very young uh when i was um believe it or not i did radio when i was younger but yes. i really wanted to get into film and working with actors and I didn't go straight that way. Um, I first uh, went into ma documentary making, and we were uh, filming then with a negative, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was exciting because suddenly, you know, you were with the real people. And, uh, and every project was different. Every project was a battle. Every subject matter was, it was always extraordinary and took you uh, to parts of the world, you know, not, ne not even necessarily parts of the world. But but even in you know in your own backyard, there's a secret that if you know how to tell a story, will fascinate anyone. You don't have to spend a lot of money. It's it's just you have to have a good story. It's actually very interesting that you mentioned that we have one of the documentaries tonight called Divers Backyard, mm -hmm. and this is basically Precisely what happened. That, yeah, yeah. yeah there, I mean, you you never know. Uh, it, it's it's curiosity, you know, mm -hmm. creating a mystery, uh, perhaps for the audience, mm -hmm. so that you will reveal something yeah. and uh, you have to watch it until the end to know what it is. Yeah. I think uh, that's, I, I, I love how documentaries unfold because of the question you want answered. And I think as an audience member watching the documentaries that I love most, seeing that unfold and finally understanding your question by the end of the film is my favorite part. It's like unwrapping a present. I'm there with you, basically discovering what you're discovering. And that is my favorite part. I love being right there because I know it's going to be so exciting for you. And it's like finding a buried treasure, basically. Yeah, and, and also and also, it's, it's real life mm -hmm. as opposed to a fiction. It's real life. You're talking about... Uh, um, anyone's experience, you know, it, ha it could happen to you. This is what happened. I'm going to show it to you and I'll explain it. So um, it's wonderful. But then I went into fiction and I did some, uh, um, I mean, did many films and I, I did one that was a little more successful than others. <laughs> what was that? Um, it was called The Artist. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Black and white silent mm -hmm. movie. Um, and you know, this is again, it was a battle. Nobody wanted to finance a black and white silent movie, obviously. Yeah, I remember how hard that was, even hearing about it in mm -hmm. entertainment news, how no one really wanted to touch the film. And they thought, well, you know, it's a nice film. And some people were just floored by it. And obviously, in the end, we all know how much attention it grabbed, not just because of the actors, but the editing and the filming. It was beautiful. It was beautifully yeah. shot. 
everyone loved the dog. <laughs> everyone <laughs> loved that dog. Uggie. So Uggy was yeah. his name? Oh my gosh, everyone loved Uggy. I, I couldn't his, hear the end of it. His name was Jack in the film. But his real his real name is Uggy. That's a way cooler name. Uggy published a book afterwards. Oh, <laughs> wow. Um, in black and white. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> it's in black and white. But it was a real book written. And it's how um, his life in Hollywood, um, how he was treated on the set. Oh. And, you know, how, how Jean Dujardin, the, the main actor, had more than he did, you know. But he had a lot of treats. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm sure he did. I'm it's like, great. His pockets was, were full of treats. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Animal lovers m must have loved that. And I also got a, a dog quite looking like Augie after that, I have oh. to say. Yeah, I yeah, know. He, he went about touring the world. Um, people wanted to see Augie. And um, the dog trainer who had this dog uh, really went everywhere. He won, he won in Cannes. He won. Uh, I, there's, a, there's a name for the dog. It's a color. It's the golden color. Oh wow! Award. I had no idea. And so he had a um, he had a celebrity um, celebrity time. Yeah, yeah, him and Lassie and Toto, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right yeah, up I think there. He's, he's among the big ones. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's really important. Did he get a big head? Uh, no. no, he retired. Oh, he retired. Good. This was his last film. He, he did uh, some commercials, mm. uh, but uh, only stills. Okay. Yeah. That's good. He needs to take it yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. He's been through a lot, so you know we don't want to wear him out too much. <laughs> he made so much. Yeah. No, a film like that. So, do you have a preference? Would you say, you know, like a silent film like that, or would you stick to the documentaries? Would that be your favorite, or is there something else, maybe a, I, a I, different kind of project you'd want to work on in the future? I think there's a balance between t the two. I, I really, um, the genre of documentaries is uh, is a form of, uh, of story telling just like we were saying mm -hmm. and um, uh, I think it's very exciting uh, uh, the idea to have a small crew that you're going to shoot maybe over a period of one or two years who knows you know uh, that you have to collect information that you discover along uh, the filming of it or the research of it what you're going to say um, and then you know in the editing room what's going to happen. Um, are you going to present the story this way or that way? Or are you going to start with the end or the beginning or the middle? There's, there's, there's a process of filmmaking um, with documentaries that always excite me. And um, I'm always looking forward when I'm going to be working on a documentary. The, 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 the fiction um, films with actors um, have, have other um, perks and, 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 and joys and and maybe have more exposure probably mm -hmm. uh, to the general public. And so that's very rewarding when, when uh, you make a film and actually you meet people who've seen your movie mm -hmm. as opposed to not. <laughs> you know? Always. Because there's, there's a lot of that. You know, people like, you have no idea. When you, when you pick an idea for a feature film, it's going to be three years of your life. So you better like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it, do you think you would go with the crew first? Do you get your crew first? Because that's really, like you said, it's really intimate. You know, you have to trust your crew and you have to like your crew. Um, is that, is that you get together first, your team and then the story or the story and then the team? Um, well, it's a good question because in the case of the artist, it started with the two leads mm -hmm. and the director. Um, he wrote for them. So in this case... Uh, we can say the crew, the acting crew, were, and actually the technician, the, the um, um, main photographer, uh, were part of the... He knew he could do it with a certain crowd around him. Mm -hmm. And um, the project would not exist without them. So that's interesting. And sometimes, uh, uh, and most of the times... Uh, you really have to have the story before. And then hopefully the people you want to work with are going to be available. Yeah, because that's not always easy to round up crews. I know even in San Diego, it's not easy to do. Actually, Antoine, you, you work with uh, some people from San Diego on, on your documentary, correct? Yeah, absolutely. We hired, um, um, there was a stills photographer, underwater photographer, mm -hmm. who still lives here. Yeah, I think his name is uh, R R Richard Herman. Okay. Richard, if you hear me. Um, <laughs> hey, Rich. There's Mark, Mark Thurlow, uh, who lives in Vista, uh, who uh, owned a boat and was also a um, uh, security diver who, did, who participated in many, many different uh, shoots that we did in the Gulf, uh, all over, all Arctic shoot um, everywhere. 
but also here in San Francisco, I mean, uh, San Diego, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and then we had PAs um, that were also hired here. And, and just, you know, we hired a lot of boats, a lot. And um, so we, we worked with uh, different marinas. Um, uh, we worked out of Mich Mission Bay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, no, we loved it here. It was, it was you know really, San Diego. Yeah, <laughs> San Diego is beautiful. And the Coronados. Yeah. If if you guys uh, get on a boat, go down to the Coronados. That's where you, mm. you you can see Pacific white side dolphins, which are, in my opinion, the most beautiful dolphins of all the dolphins, and they uh, usually uh, go about in you know five hundreds at a time. It, uh, if you if you if you leave early in the morning here when the ocean is totally flat. Even if it's gray, um, you just go out and you're like sliding on a, a sheet of ice almost, and you see these dolphins. Uh, it's just poof. You got to. It's mind blowing. It's wow. Just, it's just do it. You know, get out there. Don't scare them. <laughs> no. Well, don't what? run out. Don't run over them. I mean, be careful. Respect them. Yeah, absolutely. And had you been to San Diego before you had filmed this documentary, or was that no. the first time? It was the first time I had come here. Actually, not really. I'm, I'm, I'm in, on, my, on the side. I, I play music, mm -hmm. and um, Taylor guitars are made here in San Diego. Yeah, Taylor. and uh, so I had been to the factory. Oh, nice. okay, yeah. cool. But you had never actually went out into our waters in San no, Diego. No, 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 no. Um, I could have, but um, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you have now. Yeah. And I mean, I wouldn't want to say who's better to work with, but is it? Do you enjoy working in San Diego as much as LA? I know there's a lot of times we're compared. I'm asking the hard hitting questions here no, because no. there's a lot of times that <laughs> it's a fair, you know, it's, it's a total fair question. Yeah. And I, th I think, um, really what takes you somewhere mm -hmm. is the location and the location is determined by your script. So usually you go, um, you know, if you need to go film downtown, uh, you know, like a city, very urban thing. You may have more possibilities in LA, but mm -hmm. now that I've been, I'm staying down in, in downtown here mm -hmm. in LA, in San Diego, and I could see probably um, the same locations here. Uh, but really, um, uh, there's an atmosphere in San Diego that you don't have in LA, definitely. You know, mm -hmm. La La Land is not San Diego. Yeah, no. oh, for not. sure. Yeah, we have absolutely. the finest yeah. city in America. Yeah. Well, you know, you're always welcome to come back here and film. You know, I'm excited to see your documentary. I'm so glad you're going to be a part of Documentaries yes. on the Prado. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much both for being here, Carolina McGay and Antoine yeah. Duquesette. <laughs> Thank you so much. Check out Documentaries on the Prado. If not, check out Oceans. It's a must-see. And thank you all for joining me on Intellectual News.